Hey, this is Brendan from Comic-Con. Uh, today I've got a very special guest. Uh, I met uh, Carlos Molina out at ToyCon in Las Vegas uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I talked about his company, Project Cars. I got to see a couple of his builds. Um, I've been having a really good time looking at his builds and writing them up and seeing the pictures and things. So uh, today with us is, uh, is uh, Carlos Molina from Project Cars. How you doing, Carlos? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, so I mean, uh, the readers at Comic Con have seen the spider buggy. They've seen uh, the concept for the Deadpool Mustang. They've seen uh, the Todd McFarlane Mustang. I've been writing all those up. I know you've got plenty more to send me. Uh, but just basically, um, tell me a little bit. How did Project Cars get started? Like, what's your background here? Well, it it uh, I guess it grew from what the original concept was. Um, I, I was in my prior life. I was a military officer, and when I was overseas. Uh, we had a hard time acquiring parts for vehicles. I wasn't heavily into modifying them like I am now, but um, when you're overseas and at that time, this is like pre-Amazon uh, and all that, uh, it was hard to get an actual part for your vehicle. It took like two or three weeks. And then if it was the wrong vehicle, it would take even more for, with the exchange. So I developed an intraweb and it allowed certain people to acquire these parts for their vehicles uh, relatively quickly and it was always the one that they needed uh, that with with that uh, collaboration with different companies it, it opened my eyes to what SEMA was and on my next duty assignment in, in Italy I started developing a crave to build a vehicle for SEMA and so when I came back in 2000 uh, as I was commander of White Sands Missile Range it, uh, it was one of my goals was to get a vehicle on the SEMA and so I, I, I brought in a brand new BMW. And this was a time when a lot of people were modifying Hondas and Mitsubishis, and uh, which kind of gave me an edge because uh, it, it was a BMW um, and it was new. So a lot of sponsors jumped on board. And over the years, I developed a very robust proposal uh, from that one outing in 2000. And uh, I developed a lot of good relationships in SEMA and the SEMA community. And, and because of all the red tape I had to go through, I decided to create a group of people, uh, like-minded people, to build vehicles and show them what I did to get sponsorships. And, and, and I've done over 300 booth builds for SEMA since then. That is that is a wild number. Um, so like you said, you were founded in 1994. Uh, your yes, first sir. SEMA build was in 2000. And then I've seen lots of your nerdy cars. So uh, <laughs> if anybody knows me but at all, they know that I love when niche fandoms get together and make things happen. So at ToyCon, it's a great example. There's professional wrestling. There is the collectibles. There's toys. There's movie stuff. There's uh, TV stuff. And then there's these custom cars. There was a whole show on the side. And it's like, everybody kind of had their toes in two or three of the things but there were like five things there that were all mashed together so now starting in 2012 uh you started making uh comic book and nerdy themed cars tell us a little bit about how uh what the genesis of that uh that um development was well we were we one of the groups that we worked with here in the region uh, was a graphics company and they wanted to do a vehicle for uh, breast cancer awareness and what they did is they used a lot of the images from anime uh, on their vehicle. And then I helped them acquire a spot for SEMA and also a lot of the sponsors for SEMA. From there, we did different types of renditions of theme vehicles. Uh, but it wasn't until I think a few years later, uh, 2015, we did a uh, Deadpool versus uh, Wolverine uh, mm -hmm. GT350. Uh, two of my favorite characters in the comic community. And uh, we were approached by a Marvel attorney and and uh, they explained to us, you know, the reasons why there's uh, limited license agreements, um, the reasons why this is not perceived uh, as a positive. Um, and, and I understood. I understood everything. And from then on, we did our research to find out what was the best way to get this uh, agreement, um, you know, just try and promote the things that we liked. And, mm -hmm. and fortunately, uh, we had enough information. So when we approach, approached Todd McFarland, um, he was able to provide us that limited license agreement, which spawned <laughs> into the five uh, spawn vehicles that we built. 
which are incredible. Uh, we featured one of them already. We featured the the spawn uh, the spawn Mustang, but it's also really cool not just seeing the builds and seeing the finished product and seeing the fans interact and the cosplayers interact and stuff like that, but seeing Todd McFarlane himself get excited about it, opening up the hood, yeah. looking at the different components, talking to you about them, getting behind you know doing the poses with the uh, the gun hanging out the window and stuff. Like it's just it's really cool that you guys are so super stoked about the car and Spawn, and he's super stoked about Spawn and the car and just like how how. Uh, how much it opens up that conversation just about the things that you love and what makes you tick and just how excited he got that he did after that first one, he did four more with you, right? Right. Correct. Uh, we, we did uh, another, well, we did a GT350 and then uh, another Mustang, but this one was a wide body, super stance, three piece wheels. It had a supercharger as well. Uh, I did uh, my, my Jeep. We converted it to what we called uh, the Violator Hunter. And it was all themed out with Spawn at, at SEMA. And because of what we were doing, uh, Todd allowed me to build up his son's CRZ. Mm -hmm. And that vehicle was also um, featured at SEMA. We, we called it Son of Spawn. And, and the vehicles, Todd actually designed uh, the, the artwork that went into the rack. That's a really cool point. That's a really cool touch is that the the artwork is not just copied and pasted off of something or it's not taken out of a book is that you sent him the shape or whatever and he filled it out and said this is what it's going to look like and did the drawings for it, the illustrations and that you were able to apply that to the that's it, it, they're really cool cars and uh, we're going to link the uh, the articles I've already done and we're going to do uh, more articles in the future but um, we'll put some pictures in here too because just talking about it I'm getting excited because I've seen the pictures and um, you know I saw the spider buggy the spider buggy is amazing. Um, oh thank so, you. You had some trouble with licensing and then you were like, okay, so uh, I'm learning. So let's do this right in the future. You reached out to Todd McFarlane, but then you were also working with Tyler Kirkham. You were working with Mustafa Musa. Um, where are these relationships being formed? Like, are you reaching out to their press people? Are you reaching out to Marvel? Or are you just looking at who did a cool cover to see if you can get the licensing for it? Or, or how is that, um, that relationship being built? It, it was at different places. When, when we when we were doing these vehicles, then we got invited to San Diego Comic Con, and we were able to actually have the a booth right next to Stan Lee's booth, and that opened the door to talk to uh, certain people in his group that allowed us to do the Stan Lee Hands of Respect uh, Honda Civic. With Tyler Kirkham, I've I've been a fan of his ever since he started doing very uh, covers with with Venom, and just ran into him I think at, at an event. And then somebody else basically vied for me and and uh, you know say I was, I was a real deal, and so we were able to work with him. Mustafa, great dude. I, I like I like it when I see him at conventions. And and so another individual that I ran into in a convention, and I said, you know, I like what you do. And we had a conversation actually in the spider buggy. Uh, we did a video in the spider buggy, and I I, I asked him, I was like, hey, would you like to go to SEMA? Uh, and and you provide us the artwork for a vehicle and surprise him. He liked it. Uh, he did the artwork for Dave Shallow's uh, Hellcat, which we renamed the Hellbat. And uh, and Mustafa was actually one of the very few artists that's ever been to SEMA signing prints uh, of his artwork. And that's that's how it works. That's how ninety percent of my relationships in any of these industries have come together. Uh, that's how we met. You and I is just at a convention yeah. talking about mutual interests. So. Um, okay, so you've got now an idea for a car. Uh, the concept, um, you've got physical elements, you've got upgrades, you've got the design elements. Like, how does that all come together? Like, do you have different uh, department people working on different parts of it? Or do you all get together at a table? Like, like how does it go from, uh, I'd like to do a Deadpool car to this is what we're building, guys? There's a lot of people that support me. There's, there's a lot. A lot of these crazy ideas come at like two o'clock in the morning when uh, I'm going over stuff and, and they just come to me and I'm like, okay, how am I going to make this thought I have in my head come to fruition? And somehow I'm, I'm able to link different people into making this happen. What, you know, you, you touched on the Deadpool Mustang. I've already said, I, I, ha I really like Deadpool. And I have like a whole like shrine of his stuff, you know, and, and there's a story that ties into some of the new mutant um, 98s that I have. I don't know if we have time to get into it, but uh, I really like Deadpool and uh, Johnny Jimenez from the Toy Shack. Uh, he's come to Soldier Con before, and uh, we were just talking on the phone. And I said, "Hey, you know, this is how the Spider Buggy got to Las Vegas." And then when we we're in Las Vegas. We started talking some more, 
And then I found out that he has an affinity to Mustangs because his dad used to restore Mustangs and he has some of the rarest the Hot Wheels Mustangs around. Mm-hmm. And and I was like, look, uh, the new convertible Mustang just came out. I have this idea in my head. Let me approach some people. Let's see if we can make it happen. Um, and he was like, okay, sure. And I don't know what's going through his head. And But I, I in a couple of days, uh, I was able to talk to the main guy at Catskins, Miles, and gave him the idea, did a quick rendering of it and of different things that we've done with Mustangs in the past. He liked it. He approved it. I got a letter of confirmation. I told Johnny. Johnny's stoked about it. And now we're building a Deadpool Mustang, you know, uh, right in time for the Deadpool versus Wolverine uh, movie. That's wild. That's wild. You know, and, and Catskins, um, they're making the the custom leather covers for the seats. Um, yes. And is this... Is this vehicle going to be uh, featured at Catskin's uh, SEMA booth? Yes. And and to me, and, and for those that go to SEMA, they know the popularity of Catskin's. They know the presence that they have at SEMA. Um, I wish I had the number here, but they've been at SEMA so, for several, several years. And when Miles showed me the diagram of how the, the, the Mustang is going to be, it's like front and center of their booth. They have two other vehicles that are going to be in their booth. It's a huge booth, mind you. And, and the Deadpool Mustang is front and center. And it's, and it's really cool because I get to work with the design, one of the designers, Julio, and he's really stoked because Deadpool is his favorite character. So he put a lot of work and passion into developing the seats that are going to be on this Mustang. It's, it's, it's one of those builds that I'm really looking forward to uh, getting on the way. Right on. So that actually brings us around to funding. So you have a concept, um, you get somebody at Sina, one of these companies that makes aftermarket parts um, to say, yes, we want this for our, and then they pay for the parts, they pay for the labor. How does that work? Well, the labor is, is is myself and my guys. We, we do the labor. The parts, I have to go to different companies and hopefully I get the parts uh, comped, basically. There's some like superchargers or big brake kits and even some suspensions that most companies don't even do full sponsorships. There's only partial sponsorships, even if it's going to be in a SEMA booth. Um, And then one thing I have to say is there's two, well, there's three different types of vehicles that are at SEMA. There's vehicles that are in SEMA booths. There's vehicles that are outside, which are called feature vehicles. And then there's V spot vehicles that are outside, but their, their placement is actually paid for. So, if you if you if there's a tier, there's a feature vehicle, there's a V spot vehicle, then there's a booth vehicle, and then the booth vehicles even have tiers as well. Uh, before it used to be if your vehicle was in the center hall, which is the performance hall, that's like top top notch. Now that Las Vegas has built another hall called the West Hall, it's the brand new brand new facility. Uh, the Tesla tunnel is there. If your vehicle is in the West Hall, that's like top top tier now. So if you have a booth vehicle in the West Hall, you pretty much um, are, are guaranteed a lot of the parts are going to come in for free. Now, as far as the funding for the project, it depends on who owns it. If it's one of our own vehicles, then yes, then I'm going to be paying for the things that I can't do myself, like powder coating or, or painting. If it's a, a client, there's an agreement uh, w- with, with the client on what it's going to cost. And it's extremely reduced to what he would pay or she pay if she went on the outside. And now if it's for a company, same thing. Uh, it's it's a negotiated what, what the cost is going to be for that vehicle. Right on, right on. Okay, so, I mean, I think what you're saying with the placement of the cars, it's kind of like um, at a comics convention, we have uh, panels all day long. And so there'll be, um, you know, 50 stages, but there's the main stage and then there's um, stages that are, uh, you know, close to the main stage. And the further you get away from there is like the less prestigious, whatever. It's just kind of a, um, you know, an informational or educational uh, panel that um, has a very niche audience. So the closer you get to the main stage is the, is the biggest deal. And that main stage um, audience is always packed. So I kind of track with what you're saying there. So your cars are ending up in these places that are just like the the most coveted places and you were saying like they have multiple cars in there and you're not just a show car or a feature car or uh you know in the booth but you're in the front of the booth you are the pinnacle of what they're showing off that year and that's awesome that's that's just uh that's got to feel real good it, it does and, and when, when i got the work from catskins that they're allowing me to build a vehicle for the booth that's like hitting a grand slam at the world series it's, it's no i mean 
going to the World Series is what. Yeah, going to the World Series is one thing, but then hitting a grand slam. Yeah. That that's what the Catskins letter of confirmation means to me. And and I've been working with them for many many years. I mean, I still have uh, an old Dodge Ram we use for logistics that that has their their leather cover since two thousand nine. Um, they have allowed me to do a lot of crazy stuff and, and they appreciate what, what I, what I do for them in return with, with our, our, you know, the ROI that we provide. Okay. So all these builds that you've done, you've had, what did you say? 200 or 300 at SEMA? I've had over 300. I stopped counting. Uh, these are actually booth vehicles that we've had for, for SEMA. Right. So out of, you know, 300 plus, uh, builds that were for SEMA and all the other builds that you've done, what is your all time favorite build? I, I would really it, it's it's it, it's a it's almost a tie, but the one I have to say was the BMW 335i uh, that that we I built together with a gentleman by the name of Mike Borja out of Las Vegas. Uh, it was it was right when the 335 was coming out. Not a lot of parts were really um, uh, made for it, and then somehow I was able to uh, talk to Prior Design out of Germany. And they had just came out with the first real wide body for the for the BMW 3 Series, and Mike did an immaculate job on the paint on the paint. It was Bianco Fuji white, which is a Lamborghini color at the time, mm. and and it's a matte white that changes a little bit in in the sun. And people mm. at that time thought it was a wrap. That's how good of of a paint job it was, and it had a lot of engine modifications, coilovers. Three-piece wheels from Forge Line had a huge system from Power Base, and and the vehicle was just—I mean, it handled so well. Um, even the displace with with the weight uh, had a lot of horsepower. I was able to drift it even with uh, the added ice in the in the trunk. Um, had you know beautiful seats, and you know it, it it was just a great fun vehicle to drive, and it looked amazing. Um, I still you know hit myself with letting it go, but. It, that would have to be my my favorite build uh, was was the wide body 335i. Nice, nice. You always hear about that with with car guys. Yeah, my my dad was a, a gearhead and uh, he had a mechanic shop and he did a bunch of restorations and stuff like that. And it's always with him. It's the '53 vet that he restored um, that he sold so that my older sister could go to college. And he sold it right before the market hit. So he got you know the money that he needed to send her to college. But if he had waited a year, it would have been triple mm -hmm. that. And it's always it's always that one car that you're chasing that you worked on that you put so much into and you feel so like connected to that you had to let go for one reason or another. And someday down the line, you might see it again and make an offer and get it back or something like that. But it's always like the chase of getting that one back, that one perfect car that meant so much to you. Yeah, and then that, that would be it. I, I don't think I'll, I'll ever see that vehicle again or a similar one. But, you know, it, 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 it does hold a good place in my heart. And because of that vehicle, I developed a lot of great relationships. And that's the most important part about it. OK, so speaking of relationships, um, you I, I've seen your convention schedule. It is bonkers, man. It is all over the place. So of all the conventions that you've been to, all the ones that you're going to this year, all the ones that, um, you know, are on the schedule all the time, what is your absolute favorite uh, convention? There's a lot of cool conventions and, and by no means are, is anyone worse than the other, but no, the no, one, no. yeah, the one, the one that I, I, I always tell people about even to this day is amazing comic con, um, that is, is organized by, by Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy J and uh, I, I have a, every time I've gone there, I've had a great time, and 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 also this is where we displayed the spawn vehicles, and uh, Tom. I mean, not all of the amazing comic cons are cool, but the one that hits the most is when Todd McFarland was a, a was a special guest, and we had the spawn vehicles there. You know, we people were asking me to sign stuff for them, which I thought was okay, cool, whatever, um, but. Todd actually came to our booth just to sign some stuff for us. Uh, I still got the helmet that he signed and and so, and some of the the vehicles. Um, but people just flocked to the booth, and he ended up being there for like almost two hours. Mm -hmm. uh, his group wasn't too happy about it, but it was just so cool, and we got a lot of cover, you know video coverage of it. And and like you said, yeah, he was there, you know, just pointing out different things, asking me things about the engine, about the suspension. Mm -hmm. You know, took pictures with with the spawn 
that was in our booth, a, a guy fully dressed in Spawn. And it was just a great, great time. Uh, my family really enjoyed it. From there, I, I, you know, I got to I got to know Jimmy a little bit better. I visited him in, in California at his shop, and and I try to go there uh, as often as I can. Every time there's an amazing Comic Con, you know, an experience with Tom McFarlane, that's hard to talk. I mean, the guy he's he's so personable and so positive about stuff. Uh, we had him on for an interview, and uh, we couldn't we couldn't get it to end because he kept just going into another great story. And I think you told me a story like that too, where like you went to go pick up designs or something like that, and you ended up, up staying for like three hours because he just had story after story after story for you. And the guy is, you know, like you say, he's very personable. He's extremely, extremely intelligent. Uh, his his market ability, his marketing is just out of. He explained to me certain things of why he did certain things, and and I'm like blown away. And and I can I can tell a story of, of the baseballs if you want me to, but that is just it's just incredible to listen to him speak and how he sees things. Um, and you know the ability to, to quote unquote hang out with him was you know it's priceless. And then for him to let us go to his house and and build uh, the CRZ was was another great experience. Any time that I've had around Todd, I I just scratch my head why so many other people do, you know don't get to see that or or they have a negative connotation uh, uh, with his name. The guy is amazing. He he not only is a great artist, he's a great businessman. And he has a, a marketing brain that that trumps many, many of these super companies. That's great. That's great. Cool. Okay. So uh, we talked about the spawn vehicles. There was a Ford uh, S550 wide body, a Mustang, uh, another S550 Mustang, an S550 GT350, another Mustang, a Jeep Wrangler, a Honda CRV. That's a lot of vehicles. So you built a relationship with him and you just made a ton. Uh, I've seen some of them. Like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing more of them. But then with Tyler Kirkham, I knew about the uh, spider buggy, but I didn't realize these other vehicles here. What all did you do with Tyler? Well, uh, Tyler was, was another individual that I really appreciated his artwork and somehow he liked my idea. So he allowed me to do a, a Venom uh, Charger, Dodge Charger. We did the spider buggy, of course, from Amazing Spider-Man number 30. Uh, we did a Jeep Gladiator that was themed Spider-Gwen. Um, and then we did a Deadpool versus uh, Carnage Mustang that had every cover that he did for that series was was on one side of the vehicle. You know, the, cool. the two sides, the top, the hood, and then and then the trunk. But yeah, but, it, but uh, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm looking at it right now. The yeah, Deathstroke death wide, body, wide, wide body uh, Camaro. And um, and then on, on top of allowing us to use his artwork and, and his name, uh, he came to SEMA and uh, he, he was at different booths signing uh, uh, prints and, and giving signatures to people. And it was just a good feel. Um, and, and it was it a was good, good way to to show my homage to people that I enjoy their art. That's really cool. And that's that's one of the things that I think is a hallmark of the comics industry is that it's it's a big group, but it's also a very small group. And so um, if somebody's promoting a book for, you know, Boom Studios, Image, like whatever, um, that person will be at their own booth and then they'll end up at the artist booth and then they'll end up at the publisher's booth and then they'll end up on three panels or whatever. It's like everybody's kind of lifting each other up. So that makes like perfect sense within the community. Um, you just mentioned Rob Pryor a second ago um, and you did a couple of cars, a Joker and a Batman themed car uh, oh, yeah. in in collaboration with Rob. Can you tell us about those a little bit? Sure. So when we did the Tyler Kirkham vehicles, um, I actually convinced the company to let me have Rob Pryor paint in the booth. So Rob Pryor was painting uh, paint, you know, a, a canvas every day, and he painted the, the, the wide body Camaro, Destro Camaro, among mm -hmm. other other paintings. And uh, and that and that relationship developed to the point where he allowed me to use his artwork on on uh, different vehicles. So the the SRT Durango that we did, it was pretty much all of the Joker paintings that Rob had done in the past, and we put it all together onto a Dodge Durango. And it was, it was a big enough vehicle to capture as many of those paintings as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, I really liked his transition of the four different Batmans that he did in a painting. So we used that for a Toyota Supra. And so we had, it was a Batman Supra and had uh, the four different Batmans on the sides. And then on the, on the front and on the rear and on the A pillar were just different 
uh, portions of other Batman pieces of art that, that uh, Rob Pryor had done in the past. Yeah, I'm going to need those pictures as well. So, um, <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah. So, I love everything that you do, and I love that you're mashing together these fandoms. And, uh, you know, it, when we're talking about, you know, how people get into stuff and, and where they spend their money and how they spend their time and stuff like that, it is just super cool to me that these kinds of collaborations happen and that you get to see them at comics conventions and that you get to see them at SEMA and other shows and stuff like that. Uh, you have a show that uh, Project Cars promotes that's coming up that I'm attending. I just made arrangements for this yesterday. Oh, that's um, awesome. Soldier Con in El Paso, tell me kind of like, you know, I understand this is the first time that you're coming off post with this because you were doing a show for the soldiers and then you realize that you can't get people through the gate who are guests without going and getting passes and stuff like that. So you're moving it off post. Tell me a little bit about how the show has grown, like what it's about and and who you're kind of uh, trying to to reach with this. So I hope you guys have more time. <laughs> no, so, time. Reason, time. so I, as you, as you can tell, you know, just for this view, I like comics. I, I love cars. Um, and I want a lot of people to enjoy the things that I, I do. And that's why I created Project Cars. So I, after going to different conventions, um, you know, you, you, you have to have some type of income to go to these conventions, especially if you have a family. Um, and here in this area, if you go to a, a, a convention, it's going to run you about 250 bucks before you even step out of your vehicle. You know, that's including the three or four tickets plus the parking. 250 bucks is a lot of money for a soldier. So what we, what we felt is that we needed to bring this experience to active duty members. I, I myself, I'm a veteran. My dad is a veteran. A lot of my family members are veterans. So I took it upon myself to get my guys in project cars, to develop a, a, a venue to just you know to have the Comic Con experience to the to the soldiers, service members, and so that's what I did. And we we created this event, called it Soldier Con in 2015, and we brought on different uh, talent. Um, and and from there, because we were working with MWR Morale Welfare and Recreation for soldiers, uh, they wanted me to take it to different uh, installations. So we did, you know, Fort Bliss, we, we did Phoenix, we did Tucson, we did Fort Carson, and we we're just growing and growing and growing. Um, some of the highlights of the events, we've had uh, guys from Fast and the Furious at our events. We've had drifting <laughs> inside the military installation. I don't think it's ever going to happen again. Um, <laughs> we had the Red Bull stunt team there with their motorcycles doing flips. It was crazy. Uh, different um, uh, comic talent has come in and, and you know, sh you know, sh shown their their artwork and done commissions and so forth, and uh, brought in the different communities for for cosplayers. It's been really really fun. Uh, but now we've we've outgrown the venues of military installations, and we're going to bring this to the city. We're gonna we're actually going to be doing this at the Starlight Convention Center in El Paso, Texas, in September. And and going back to the reason why I did this. Uh, since we can't offer the $10 admission that we used to charge uh, uh, service members and family members when we were on the installations, we're, we're allowing service members to come in free. Um, and in addition to that, there, there's, we're not going to charge uh, a parking fee uh, to park their vehicles. So I'm, I'm still trying to do what I did initially, um, you know, provide this, this type of experience to service member, but now it's going to be outside of the military installation. My my short term goal is to reach a lot more cities that have a large military installation like Fort Bliss. My long term goals is to take this experience to Europe, take Soldier Con to Europe, and bring talent, uh, comic community talent, to you know installations like Vicenza, Italy, Longstuhl, Germany, Frankfurt, Germany, uh, to bring that experience to service members that are are deployed overseas. That's really cool. You know, uh, I'm also a veteran um, and I've got a 23 uh, year old that's in the army now. Um, and I know <clears throat> the, uh, you know, looking at his pay stubs and looking at my pay stubs, they haven't really changed much in the last 26 years. So um, it is, it is a big deal and, you know, feel however you want about what the military is doing or what the government's doing or politics or anything like that. These are young men who are not getting paid 
nearly living wages for the things that they're doing. And that alone right there makes it a, a valuable um, resource to be able to go and experience, um, you know, a comics convention or something. I was working with a charity before that was sending uh, boxes of comics to soldiers who were deployed overseas. And I just think that's the coolest thing is like they're, you know, they're away from their families. They're young. They're impressionable. All these terrible things are happening around them. And they get a box from home that's just full of comics, you know, and it's like no matter what you did at the motor pool this week, you know, no matter what garbage you've been eating because you're out of money and the dining facilities across post or whatever, you know, having those normalizing experiences um, where you're able to go to a convention, we're able to cosplay, we're able to talk to people who, um, you know, are in the industries that that really kind of, you know, what do you do in the barracks? You sit there and you play video games, you read comics, you watch uh, TV and movies and stuff like that. Like all of the things that are kind of part of their reality um, kind of opens up into this big social thing. And I think it's great. Um, I, like I said, I'm looking forward to it. I, I booked my flight yesterday. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's going into my, I, I bumped another schedule or I, I bumped I another convention completely off my schedule to make room for this because I want to see it. I want to see how it opens up. I want to see your first year. Um, like the things happen. I want to see from the ground up, like where this is going. So I'm excited for that. Um, oh, one other question that I forgot to get to when we were talking specifically about the cars, <clears throat> I know that a lot of these cars, when I'm looking at the stats and I'm looking at the stuff you put in or whatever, it's got ratings for, you know, 200 miles an hour for this hood and for this scoop and for these wheels. And like, how often do these, these vehicles that have got to cost, you know, between all the parts and everything, they've got to cost an insane amount of money, but uh, how often do they actually get out to the track and do drifting or see how fast they can do a, a you know, a, a mile lap or whatever? Like how often do they get tested out at the track? Well, yeah, and, and, you, and you touched on a point. Most of these builds are, they get in parts about forty to $60,000 in parts. That's not, in, that's not including what the labor would cost uh, to, to get those parts installed. Um, a majority of the vehicles that get the high performance products like a supercharger, uh, we dyno test them. To, mm -hmm. to let the, you know, the company that we're working with know, hey, this, is, this and this is what was done. Um, a lot of the vehicles that I own, I go through a set of tires on a weekend, uh, especially like the Soldier Con. We, we drifted the S550 supercharged, uh, Whipple supercharged S550, and the Toyota tires lasted one session. Um, but, you know, some of the guys are, are into SCCA racing, so they'll race their vehicles, and others, they like to take their vehicle on the track, and, and they do, you know, try to find out what, what uh, track times they can get. But yeah, they're t they're tested, and then our our trucks, the trucks that we use, a majority of them, you know, are not going to get like a supercharger like my F one fifty did, but they get upgraded suspension and they get upgraded tires and beadlock wheels, and we're using those in the desert. They're not they're not trailer queens. They're not you know just chromed out suspensions. We're actually using them. We're either going to use them to go off roading or we're going to use them for logistics to tow another vehicle to a show or to tow some of the show show products uh for a show um that's so, really so they cool. are being used yeah that's really cool and that's that's a fair point and that's what i was trying to get at is like you know there are people who collect things to collect things like i'm not going to go out and i keep pointing at the wrong wall i'm not going to go out and throw these baseballs right so there are people mm -hmm. who collect just to collect but i think that you know when somebody puts this much thought and effort and all these different parts and things into a car it needs to be driven and so it's really cool that like these are not just pretty cars they actually you know they get out there and they perform and that's really awesome Cool. So we're going to drop all the links in the show notes uh, for Project Cars and for Soldier Con so people can get more information about that. I really, really uh, had a good time here. Um, I'm looking forward Thank to seeing you. you again at the next convention. Thank you very much for coming out. Uh, I'm Brendan Allen. This is Carlos Molina of Project Cars and Soldier Con. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.